Have you been sitting at home wondering how in the world am I supposed to pay my bills during COVID-19? Well, this, this is for you. Hey, so I hope everybody's doing well out there. Um, we are finally coming to the end of this quarantine life with COVID-19. Um, today they opened up LA County for salons and beauty places, nails, things like that. And I'm for one super excited. I'm ready to get back to work. Um, I'm ready to see my team and to move forward like I have plans to do this year. One thing that I have found very interesting um, is that during COVID-19, we were literally held hostage, at least me, because I applied for unemployment as soon as I found out that I wasn't working anymore. And um, I have yet to, to have a check. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it. And I know that I can't be the only one. I'm sure other people have um, dealt with it as well. But what's really irresponsible to me on their behalf is that if you know that we're all sitting at home and there is a process that was in place prior to COVID-19 and the process is already long, maybe you shouldn't follow the same process when there is a pandemic, you know? Um, I have not, haven't been able to speak to anyone on the EDD or at the EDD. I cannot show up, obviously. And... I'm now expected to pay bills. Thank God that I am a manager and I was able to go back to work a little bit before COVID-19 to do administrative work and things like that. And now my team is back on board and things are great, are going, are looking great. Um, but everyone is not that, um, doesn't have that same story. And I find it very um, sad that we would be in a place sad that, um, that people would have to deal with that, especially people who are not as vocal. So imagine how many people are at home and not saying anything because they feel like they don't have a choice. I would say that we just need to do better as far as the country, you know? Now that we do have a precedent, let's do better, right? Meanwhile, we have all these reality shows who are doing this type of web cam home reunion type thing, and I'm not a fan for it. I'm not here for it, girl. You know, just stay at home like we all doing. You can't work either. You know, just stay at home, take a sick day. Because what I saw was just, and I'm just like, I would have felt better had you just waited until we're able to come out of COVID-19. Um, one of the shows that are is on my list would definitely be The Housewives of Atlanta. That was a shenanigan pie, you know? It was just ridiculous. The way that Nene acted, I was embarrassed for her. There is a point that you have to grow up Regardless if you're a character, char character on a show, you still have to set some type of ground rule to grow up. You know, you're walking off of a set that's at your house to say what? What kind of point is that making other than you like an idiot? That's what the point is. Apparently, she felt like it was totally appropriate for her to not just walk off, but to put her laptop, laptop, screen down. Um, and, and, and quite nicely have a notepad there for us so that we can see her scribble. You know, that was very interesting. And I'm like, girl, you're like 78. You know, this has to change. Like, what's your next step? Your, your fire is dying and, it's, and people who act that way, it's a desperate move for attention. And we all know that. Um, she made Kenya look good, which is very hard to do because Kenya is, mm-hmm, right. So... And Kenya loved it. She very well reveled in the fact that reveled in the fact that she was a a pain to Nini, you know. And Nini leaving, it was great for her. Um, I I liked when Eva kind of had a moment. The the emotion that Eva was allowed to show on the show is because a lot of people don't believe her, right? And why would this woman put all this energy in creating this storyline if it was not true? Like, I believe every word that this guy is completely who she says he is. Um, and I hope and wish her the best. I like to see her, since I was a fan of America's Next Top Model, I like to see her still be on the scene and, and be in a positive place. Um, she is definitely not one of the problem people that they try to make her be. Like, she's not the most real. She's the most adult. If she's the most adult, it's because 
Um, to me, once you become older, there is no such thing as this real thing that we talk about because it's a case by case thing. You know, sometimes you, you can't say everything to everyone and it's not appropriate to say everything to someone. Sometimes you're just joking in the moment and that's completely what it is. It has nothing to do with being shady or being like, I don't like that woman. I'm just joking. And I'm in a place where she's not sitting here. So I don't have to necessarily filter for her emotions because she's not here and I'm having a fun moment with a friend the problem is that Eva doesn't realize that she's on a TV show and everyone's gonna see it sis and then she tries to be like oh I don't remember yes you do but what the other women don't realize is that when she says that she doesn't remember what she's really saying is that girl this is not that serious to me I have a whole set of friends outside of this show and this is a job and I think people all of them need to take that approach because um at the end of the day, that's what this is. You have to show up and do a job, but you need to separate the two, right? Uh, the other thing that was very interesting about it was how Candy and, and Nini kind of got into it. And then Nini tried to blame Candy for their interaction. I don't necessarily think that Candy had any fault in there. I think that Nini, if any, if any part of Nini is threatened... It was threatened by Candy because Candy is literally the most, the richest one, um, argu argu arguably, I'm working on it. Um, she's definitely the one who is, is very successful out of the group, you know, and was famous prior to coming to the show. So for Nene to get into it with Candy is really pointless because at the end of the day, sis, there is no competition, period. End of story. Another end of story is, who cares who had a tape of somebody recording something of these grown-ass women? Like, who cares? Them bringing the other girl in, Ivana, um, I was just like, why? You know, the fact that this is the center of, of the episode, of the season, is really interesting to me. And it's a sign that maybe it's time to move on. Just like the girls did on Mary to Madison. They found a way to move on to the next chapter. And I think that's time for Atlanta to do the same. Right? Um, another one of these shows that decided to do a reunion, which was tonight, is RuPaul's Drag Race. And if I'm being completely honest, I would have to say that it definitely left me um, wondering why I hit the power button on my remote. Um, because I'm like, maybe you should also just wait it or tweet at the winner. I don't know. I don't know if that would have been better, but I didn't like the, or at least make the show like 30 minutes. I don't think it needed all of that that they tried to do just to fill in the time slot that they were probably contracted to have. Um, however, I do agree with the winner. I think Jada, Jade, is it Jada? Jada? That's no sign of whether I like her or not. Trust me, not shady. Um, but I, I am so glad she won. She was great. Also, when she did the lip sync with the blonde and the brown root, I was here for it. As a stylist, I'm like, thank you for no demarcation. Overall, as a whole, I would definitely have to say I am extremely happy that this is over. Quarantine is over and we can get back to our normal as well as our normal television shows. Um, but overall, I think that this was a definite um, restart button for all of us, at least for me. I'm taking it as a sign or as a moment to have reflect, uh, reflected on what I want to do, how I want to present, how I want to be in the world, um, understanding that it matters, what I do matters, um, my job, my career, my future is, um, it matters, you know, and there, there are steps and blocks that I need to put in place in order for that to move forward. And that's what Corona helped me to see, you know, and I had the time to do it. What I would like to leave with you is to just be hopeful, continue to be hopeful and to make sure that you, you get your money, do what you need to do to get your money. Stay consistent, stay persistent, call them, do whatever you need to do. Um, just make sure because it's your money. And it's clearly a sign of the pandemic of why they're probably so overwhelmed. This was an office who was only open from 8 to 12. And they had to take over 4 million. And you know what I'm saying? So, the, you know, it is it's understandable. But I don't care. Right? So, And I'm sure no one else cares. My bills are due. People are knocking at the door. So we need to get the money. Uh, for those of you who are not working, make sure you do that. Those of you who are back at work, make sure you're safe. Doing what you need to do. I will see you guys next time. Thank you.